Welcome to the Heart and Soul Wellness Podcast, where we inspire women by teaching applicable skills and tools and assisting them with connecting with one another, healing, and aspiring to their highest selves so they can reach their full potential. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. It's an honor to be with you today. Today, we are talking about the art of healing from codependency, and this is one of my very favorite topics, primarily because I think it is so misunderstood. Um, It is a buzzword. It's something that is thrown out there a lot, and I think sometimes we can become confused about what it really means and how it can really present in relationships, and so I hope to shed some light on some of this. So first of all, we want to talk a little bit about codependency. And so I'm going to share a line. So I am going to be using uh, Melody Beattie's book, um, Codependent No More. Um, I think she's a great resource. Um, There's several other books that have been written on this topic. Um, There's a really good boundaries book that I'm going to, will include in the show notes for you to check out as well. Um, But primarily what we're talking about today is how to take ownership for our lives. And so um, the first thing I'm going to share is it's kind of a mantra that Melody uses. And it says, today, I will not wait for others to see and care. I will take responsibility for being aware of my pain and my problems and caring about myself. Recovery is not about being right. It's about allowing ourselves to be who we are and accepting others as they are. So in codependency, a lot of times what happens is we get enmeshed in relationships. And enmeshment looks like, I don't know where I stop and where you begin because we're so intertwined with each other's stuff that it's difficult for me to keep my own sense of identity and sense of belonging. Um, And so I'm going to talk about some of the characteristics and behaviors that present with codependency and how to work through those if you are experiencing those. And I want to just right off the bat, there is no shame if you are engaging in any of these behaviors. Most people are in one form or another. It really is just about generating awareness on how you want to show up as an individual and as a person. The only way we really can change something is by understanding it and change never happens with shame. So just right off the bat, if, if I say codependency and you feel like, oh gosh, like I know I struggle with this, just know that most people do uh, a good percentage of people do. And um, it is just about daily practices of taking care of yourself to heal from codependency. Um, Okay. So I'm going to go over a couple of things. Um, So there are some characteristics that sometimes go along with codependency. And I am a think outside of the box therapist. I I do not think it's a good idea to uh, put a label on everything. Um, I think label um, diagnosis can be helpful. Understanding mental illness obviously is very helpful in terms of categories of things. However, I think that we can find ourselves very stuck if we rely on um, um, kind of like black and white thinking. So thinking that if I have a couple of codependent behaviors, that that means I have all of them. This is just like general guidelines for you to explore if this shows up for you. So the first section on this is caretaking. Okay. So If you are a codependent, you may feel responsible for other people, other people's feelings, actions, wants, needs, well-being, lack of well-being, and ultimate destiny, meaning meaning you feel responsible for maybe the, um, the way somebody else, let me reframe, reframe this. Um, You may feel responsible for somebody somebody else being able to be happy, okay? That's a very common one, feeling responsible for the happiness of other people. And a lot of times this happens with good intentions, right? Like feeling empathetic and really caring deeply about people is not a bad thing. That's a beautiful thing. However, out of balance, it can be destructive to your own psyche and your own growth. 
feel pity, um, guilt when other people have a problem, feel compelled, almost forced to help that person solve the problem, such as offering unwanted advice, uh, a lot of suggestions or fixing feelings. Okay. This means like you're really engaging in the work of like really wanting this person to get better. And so you may be doing all the research. You may have all of this stuff down pat, know the best therapist, know the best plan of action. And yet the, the person with the issue is not doing the work because you're doing the work. Right. So, um, uh, sometimes saying yes when they mean no, uh, not knowing what they want or need. If they do tell themselves that they what they want is not important, like what my desires are don't matter. Um, feel safest when giving, feel insecure and guilty when somebody gives to them. Okay, so this can show up with compliments too. Somebody compliments you and you get really uncomfortable hearing positive feedback from somebody else. It feels uncomfortable. Um, feel bored, empty, and worthless if they don't have a crisis in their lives, problem to solve, or someone to help. Right, so sometimes it becomes a way of functioning. Um, feel angry, victimized, and unappreciated and used when people take advantage of you. Um, but then it's the pattern that people do take advantage of you because you are seen as someone who will give and give and you don't have boundaries. Okay. Low self-worth is very common. Um, a lot of times codependents come from very repressed, dysfunctional homes, deny their family was troubled, repressed, or dysfunctional. Sometimes that happens if someone hasn't done their work. Um, get angry, defensive, self-righteous, and indignant with others blame, criticize the codependents. So not sometimes uh, there's difficulty with taking accountability. And feel rejection, take things personally. Yeah. Okay, so there is a section on repression, so repressing emotions. Again, that comes back to not taking care of your needs and then controlling. So, so I want you to look at, think about this in a different way. It's not like controlling like when you're in an abusive relationship and somebody is intentionally like looking for ways to have power over you. With a codependent who's healing or who is, isn't aware yet that they are codependent, it looks like behaviors that bring down your anxiety because of the actions of other people. Okay, so if you are with somebody who is engaged in an addictive behavior, let's say it's substance abuse, and you're constantly like checking on them, uh, you know, um, following up in a lot of different ways, checking with that person's friends. Um, and maybe you are doing things to keep this person from having money to buy the drugs or constantly asking and asking, like, are you using, are you using? This is a way of managing the anxiety that comes from the betrayal of being with someone who is engaging in using behaviors. Um, whether that's a substance abuse issue or pornography, whatever it may be, it is a way of like um, managing your own anxiety. Okay. So controlling behaviors do come along with that. Um, don't see or deal with their fear of loss of control. Like again, the powerlessness and the lack of control, especially when you're in a relationship with someone either who is emotionally abusive or let's say somebody who's using and engaging in addictive behaviors, there are a set of hyper vigilant behaviors that are used as a way of managing those emotions. So, like I said, um, checking on things, checking on that person constantly, having a hard time focusing on yourself and being very overly involved with the other person's behaviors is one. Um, denial. Okay. So ignoring problems, um, ignoring the problems with, within a relationship that you're facing because it's really difficult to face that they're happening. Um, see, so tell themselves things will be better tomorrow or getting really hyper-focused on like doing something fun and ignoring what's happening in the present, spending money compulsively, overeating, um, pretending those things aren't happening either, uh, watch problems get worse, lie to themselves. 
I'm not going to go through all of these, but I am going to go through the boundaries issue and the lack of trust. Um, oftentimes in codependency, there is a lack of self-trust. And so I'm going to read some of those. Don't trust themselves. Don't trust their feelings. Don't trust their decisions. Don't trust other people. Try to trust unworthy people. Um, sometimes it leads to a lack of faith in God for some people. Um, I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just saying that that is what it is. A lot of times there's like a faith or a crisis that a person may explore. And then um, weak boundaries. Uh, say they won't tolerate certain behaviors from people, gradually increase their tolerance until they can tolerate and do things they say they never would do. Um, let others hurt them. Keep letting people hurt them. Uh, hurt them. Wonder why they hurt so badly. Complain, blame, and try to control while they continue to stand there, like staying, staying in the relationship. Um, finally getting angry after a period of time. Okay. Um, so there are several other characteristics you can go through. If you, if you check out Melody's book, she does a really good job of going through a lot of the characteristics. I'm not going to go through all of them today, but there are several chapters in this book that I highly recommend that are really helpful with breaking free. Okay. And so what I want to focus on today is how you can cultivate a relationship with yourself and build your own identity. I don't think it's. I think it can be helpful to understand characteristics, but I don't think it's helpful to spend a lot of time on them, primarily because where I want you to focus is how you can create the life that you want for yourself instead of getting wrapped up in uh, the idea that you're broken or the idea that you have all these characteristics and what am I going to do about it? These are just symptoms to help us understand a problem. Okay. And so when you are able to identify you have a lack of self-trust and you're able to uh, demonstrate effort in that area so that you can heal from that lack of self-trust. So what I want to talk about today is how you can do that. So first things first is we need to be able to know ourselves. And so there's another quote from Melody that I'm going to read. Okay. So she says, allowing our... Oh, stepping in, stepping outside of fixing others and allowing ourselves to heal our wounds by focusing inward. So what she says is we don't lead others to the light by stepping into the darkness with them. Okay, so leading others to the light is really us being firm and secure in who we are and not engaging in behaviors that are going to create more distress or destruction in our lives, right? So... Let's say you're in a relationship with someone who is not healthy. And so let's say because they're not healthy, you're constantly engaging with this person in an, it maybe even in an unhealthy way um, because you're trying to, you want things to be better. So you kind of go into the darkness with them. And this is never where healing is going to happen. When you're going into the darkness with someone, it's really impossible to keep your own sense of stability while you are watching somebody drown. Okay. So we all have to save ourselves. We cannot save anybody. We just really can't. We can be like an example and we can do our own work and we can be solid with ourselves, but we are not able to save other people. So this idea of rescuing yourself is a good one to focus on, meaning that you put your energy and your effort into healing and then as you're healing, healthy relationships naturally develop because you are doing your work. So um, allowing ourselves to increase our choices and ability um, and our ability to create our own future um, through the choices that we make lead us to a path of healing instead of self-destruction. So what I want you to think about is like, well, what, where am I at today? And where do I want to be at? And when you recognize where you're at today, it gives you some helpful information on what you want to improve on. And so generally, I like to start with five areas. Okay. And so I want you to think about responsibility for yourself. Okay. So that you're emotionally responsible, physically resp responsible, uh, financially responsible, and then um, 
And then there's two more areas that you can kind of add um, or take away depending on what you're wanting to work on. But, you know, professionally, or you can also focus on other things. Like um, you can even think about like your home and kind of like what you're wanting to create in your home. So I'm really a firm believer that when we focus on the creative process, when we allow ourselves to be creators, we really are able to do some profound work. But a lot of times we don't recognize our own worth. We don't recognize what we are capable of doing. And so then we sell ourselves short. And when that happens, we can step into helplessness. And helplessness is a piece of codependency. So helplessness looks like, I'm not a good mom. I'm not good at taking care of my home, you know, and that can just lead us in a spiral where we're, you know, like, like laying in our bed for two weeks watching, you know, like our favorite sitcom and, and where we want to avoid life completely. So those avoidance behaviors are a way of navigating the distress and the um, emotions that we feel, but they pull us away from where we want to be. So I like, what I like to do is focus on five areas. Okay. And those five areas we talked about, but especially if you don't want to do five emotionally, physically, and spiritual health is a good place to start. Okay. So thinking about your emotional needs, your physical needs, and your spiritual needs. And when it comes to a relationship, what I want you to think about is like the serenity prayer. Okay. So the serenity prayer is... God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So whatever your definition of God is, right? But this idea of having some kind of higher power to assist you with like, okay, help me to accept the things I cannot change and to know the things I can. So two things I want you to think about. You are the um, hero of your own story. Okay. So I like to think about superheroes. That's me. I really love superheroes. So I'm a big Marvel fan. So I love Captain Marvel, Wonder Woman. Like I love all that stuff. I want you to really think about you being the superhero of your own story. Maybe that's you being the Wonder Woman of your own story, or maybe, you know, maybe that doesn't work for you, but something else does. But I really want you to think of that. So being the victor instead of the victim. With codependency, there's a lot of victimization. Um, Partially that comes from childhood trauma or relationship trauma. But being the victor of your own story means you are taking ownership to step into your story and stepping into your life with power and meaning. Okay. And so when that happens, um, I see people who are really, really do some phenomenal things. Okay. Okay. But it is, we are working with these negative beliefs. And so we have to change the way we're talking to ourselves. So the first thing I would say is change the narrative to a story of you being a hero, you being a victor, you being the Wonder Woman, whatever it is. I want you to think about you being the hero of your own story. Okay. And so when you do this, um, I want you to think about... um, what things you are overcoming right now. And I want you to actually imagine yourself overcoming those things. So if it is like financial challenges, if it is depression, if it is whatever, I want you to write down, um, write down the things that you have, that you have, you write it in the future tense, like if it has already happened. So let me give an example. It could be something like, I am the victor of my story and I choose to live each day with purpose and meaning. You also could say something like, I am financially responsible and I choose to live within my means. You could do um, something along the lines of, I am a successful um, professional. If, If that's something, you can also write down things about being a successful mom. Like I embrace motherhood and I, And I trust my ability to respond to my children's needs. The other part of healing from codependency is stepping outside of fixing others and allowing ourselves to heal our own wounds um, by focusing inward on what is here to be 
sensed, understood, um, what are my experiences, and actually even just putting out a welcome mat. Oftentimes with codependency, we're afraid of our emotions. We're afraid to sit with pain. We want to avoid pain, um, which makes sense. Our brain's job is to avoid pain and seek pleasure. And that's part of what the limbic system is about. But this allows us to move to those higher faculties of our mind that teach us discipline and the ability to work through issues and the ability to overcome challenges. And this is what really builds our confidence, our ability to trust ourselves, to trust that life is unfolding the way it is. And that instead of fighting against life, we can, we can learn how to go with the flow of life. Um, so it's a powerful tool um, that can be used. One thing that I would encourage you to do is to um, think about what your needs are in all of those areas, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Where, where are some areas that maybe you need some more attention and where are the, your strengths? And by focusing on those strengths and focusing on what's, what's working well, you're going to be able to see improvement. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about is, okay, so the art of acceptance, the art of acceptance is really a beautiful, it's a beautiful skill to build. It really is about accepting ourselves and accepting others and not feeling like we need to fix anyone and not feeling like we even need to fix ourselves, but that we can just trust the growth process, set daily, um, I call them dailies, but basically they're daily goals. And I do this every morning, but um, a daily goal for each area that you want to focus on that day. And that is what's going to help you stay focused on the path that you want to be on of healing. Um, So when you find yourself getting distracted or when you find yourself feeling a little bit pulled by different areas of life, which we all go through, accepting that that's part of the growth process and then asking yourself, what can I learn from this experience and how can I love and accept myself? And so when you do that and you practice the self-acceptance, it's like, even if my relationship isn't working out the way I want it to, I can still, I can still belong to myself. So we get to choose how to show up for ourselves. We get to choose how to show up, but we also get to choose how to accept ourselves. What I would do is I would go through the um, grief cycle, if you can pull it up. Um, Actually, we'll include it in the show notes. Um, But what I want you to think about is a lot of times when we have a hard time letting go of something, we are actually going through our own sense of grief. When we're grieving, we go through denial, we go through bargaining, we go through grief, we go through um, depression, anger, and then we move to acceptance. And acceptance is this beautiful place of accepting the reality that we are facing right now in this moment, instead of fighting against it. Um, And of course, it's normal to go through all those emotions so that we can move to acceptance and that we can't get there all at once. But if we can start to accept the life experiences that we have and then come back to how can I be a victor over my own story, meaning how can I move through these emotions? And like we talked about, a mantra that's really helpful is I'm not a victim. I'm a survivor. And even saying that a hundred times a day and reminding yourself that you are a survivor, that you are not a victim of your life, but that you can actually take ownership for it. Just one piece. If you start with one little small piece of your life that you want to take ownership for, even if it's with emotions, like I choose to take responsibility and ownership for the emotions that I have and responding to them with love and kindness, it's a great place to be. If you are wanting to um, focus on your strengths, I think thinking about the strengths that you have is a great place to start as well. These are all things that build this internal reservoir for us of um, resilience. And that resilience is what helps us ride through the difficult moments in life. 
But see, when we don't belong to ourselves and we don't have that firm foundation within ourselves, it's easy to get tossed on the winds, on the waves and get tossed through life. Um, But when we can come back to this place of meaning and purpose and what is it I'm wanting to create in my life, then we come back to a deeper understanding of who we are. And even just thinking about what is the kind of, what kind of person do I want to be? And how can I, how can I show up for myself? And even just starting with showing up for yourself in a way that makes sense is a beautiful place to be. Um, It has been an honor to be with you today. My, my advice or my suggestion until I see you next week is I want you to just think about how you want to be a victor in your story, writing down a list of your strengths, and then thinking about um, thinking about what life would look like connected to yourself, connected to the people around you that inspire you to move forward, inspire the very best in you, not the worst, but people who inspire the best in you. Even noticing how you feel when you are around people who are kind and compassionate versus people who are critical and noticing how your mood shifts and noticing the things, the activities that are nurturing to you and coming back to this place of belonging and integrity looks like I deserve healthy relationships. I deserve to have people in my life that are supportive. If you don't have that in your life, it's okay. You can still work on this work. You can still work on building your own internal strength and resilience and reservoir. Oftentimes it's there all along. We're just reminding ourselves that it's been there this entire time, that we are the wonder woman or we are the victor. And we just have to remind ourselves that it's there. I hope you have a beautiful week and I look forward to connecting with you next week. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Heart and Soul Wellness Podcast with your host, Sarah Carter. Make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts about what we talked about today, leave a comment. Also, you can find us at heartandsoulwellness.org and on Facebook and Instagram. Join us again as we continue to help women heal, connect, and aspire to their true and authentic selves.